Hey, um, I'm back in the studio, and today I'm uh, making some glazes. Uh, thought I'd show you kind of what goes into making a glaze, if you haven't ever done that. Um, I'm making a uh, Timaku. Uh, it's a very simple glaze. Basically, uh, three ingredients plus the colorant, and then uh, it's got some bentonite in it, which is uh, just a small amount. Um, so here's what we're going to do. First thing I got, I got a uh, a uh, recipe here that really is just it's out of uh, John Britt's book. Uh, mid-range glazes um, somehow that looked like it was backwards but anyway um, it's a complete guide to mid-range glazes cone 4 to cone 7 I get a lot of glazes out of there there's other recipes online you can use uh, so anyway long and short of it is basically we have a uh, this is a kitchen scale here um, bought it at a big box store uh, a stainless steel bowl that I use and then uh, I just zero out the uh, scale and um, start mix uh, adding materials off the recipe so, whoa, <laughs> they're too far, the uh, tripod can't hold it. All right, so the first thing on the recipe is custard, custard feldspar, and that is feldspar is like one of the most prominent. Uh, Materials, I guess. Anyway, it's going to take quite a bit of this, so I've got one bag. Oh, yeah, by the way, I always wear a respirator. So I got to get that on it. So it might be a little hard to hear me, but these guys' uh, chemicals are just powder, so. Okay shake it off as a uh, switch but we need i'm making a six thousand gram bat so i need uh 3.12 kilograms of custard cell size so here we go this bag doesn't have a whole lot in it so i'm just going to dump it in and put it in the other bag I'm going to do this with stirring up as much little dust as possible. Okay. Have we got the other bag open? Well, I'm going to go to two kilograms and then measure from there. All right, there's two, two kilograms. Exactly two kilograms. So we'll put that in our bucket. Put 
good thing to zero out again. There we go. So now we need 1.12 kilograms. Of course, I went over. Perfect. 1.12 kilograms. Alright, so... Put that in a bucket. <laughs> okay, zero that out again. Now we're going to go we're going to uh, mix silica which is uh, silica is not good for your lungs at all when it's in powdered form anyway so silica we need about one and three quarter kilograms. So I'm gonna put my respirator back on and we'll add that to our glaze recipe. No sir. Still no sir. <laughs> There we go. So we'll put this in the bucket. Hey, you hear that? Okay. There's the lid. There we go. Program of lighting. Just a little bit less than this bag. It's going to make uh, about 13 pounds of gla dry glaze.
in rib you add about 70 percent water so okay so we're getting there so those are our glaze ingredients and uh, we have to add the colorant and for this glaze is a, is a brown kind of transparent glaze is if you put it on thick, it comes out brown. If you come out, uh, put it on thin, it comes out like a root beer. And so the colorant, whew, the colorant here is red iron oxide, which if you know what red iron oxide is, I've owned this bag of red iron oxide since I was... 23 years old. I'm still using it. So, but red iron oxide is rust. It's just oxidized iron. So, we need one, basically one kilogram or a thousand grams, which is quite a bit. But lucky, luckily, it weighs quite a bit. So, Clean, clean everything out of my scoop here. And I gotta get my mask back on. I normally wouldn't take the mask off, but I'm trying to make it so you can actually hear what I'm doing. Okay. We'll end up here. That's a lot of red on my I'm checking my notes here because this just looks like an enormous amount of red iron mixer. Over. <laughs> it's over. There we go. Okay, get this red iron oxide on something. And it, like the fingers, does not want to come off. Okay, so there's the red iron, the colorant. It's going in the bucket. I'm checking off my ingredients as I add them. So we need 2% bentonite. Bentonite is a It's actually clay and it works like a binder and fills in all the little gaps in the glaze when it's on the in the dry dry and hanging onto the side of the pot it actually binds the glaze together so it's really important need two percent uh which is a hundred and twenty grams. Dang, I can't get the thing to stay zeroed. 
Okay, so they use bentonite in all kinds of things. Uh, if you see those machines alongside the road uh, that are boring under the road, they use bentonite in those and it actually it works like a lubricant in the dirt. So bentonite's like they use a lot of bentonite around anymore. Okay, one more time with the respirator. I will wrap this puppy up. One hundred and twenty grams. Okay. So you see it doesn't take very much of that. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you I can be able to mix some water in here. It takes a long time to get it mixed. But we just have all the dry ingredients in the bucket. And uh I'm going to stir those up with the respirator on while they're dry and get them mixed pretty well. And then, I'll get this up while you're talking to me. Get this, uh, this mixed up and then we will uh, measure out the water. Pour the water in here, get it at, uh, mixed and I'll let it sit overnight and then uh, sieve it and I'll run it through a uh, 80 mesh sieve. This is an 80 mesh sieve. I don't know if you can see the wires in that but it's a real fine screen and if there's any anything there what 80 mesh is there's 80 wires per inch in each direction. So if anything smaller than that, it won't fit through this sieve. And so it won't put a big glob on the side of your pot or change the color in that area. So anyway, so we sieve it and uh, it'll be ready to put on pots and I'm gonna be glazing. Hopefully I'll get time to glaze tomorrow. Usually it takes me a couple of days to glaze to fill my kiln and then I'm going to fire it and I'll show you the opening good or bad because you never know whether you have a good glaze uh, fire or a bad one uh, so hopefully this works out I'll talk to you later